Hello, I'm Richard Gisbert, and you're at The Listening Post, where we dig into the coverage and examine how news is reported. There has been a changing of the political guard in Australia. Prime Minister Scott Morrison is out, defeated in an election in which climate change and what to do about it played a central role. Having experienced forest fires, floods and droughts, Australians turned on Morrison for his refusal to take this existential threat as seriously as they do. They backed the left-leaning Labour Party led by Anthony Albanese. The new government, a progressive coalition, includes Green Party and independent MPs who promise they'll tackle climate change head on. The outcome also amounts to a rejection of Rupert Murdoch's News Corp, which backed Morrison and ridiculed candidates demanding action on the climate. Australia gave birth to Murdoch and his media empire. He's used to setting the political agenda down under. Not this time. Our starting point this week is the aftermath of the Australian election. Together we can end the climate wars. Australia has experienced the impacts of climate change firsthand. Three out of control bushfires are continuing to burn in Western Australia. So many fires, hot spots all around the area. Severe bushfires, significant flooding. Up to 500 millimetres is forecast to fall over the next three days. Weather events that are being fuelled by warming global temperatures. Australians went to the polls with those images front of mind, whether it was in their own neighbourhoods or pictures on the nightly news. The dry spell right now in Queensland and New South Wales is one of the worst in our history. Climate change was key this federal election. Climate has finally made an impact, becoming one of the issues to swing an election. We thought it would be the case in 2019. It wasn't, but 2022 delivered. Better late than never for the planet's sake. It is no mystery why the Australian government has resisted dealing with the existential issue of climate breakdown for so long. With an economy partly built on its mining sector, Australia is the world's third largest exporter of fossil fuels. It's in the top 10% of polluting countries overall. That's a lot of jobs and corporate lobbying power. Mr. Speaker, this is coal. Don't be afraid. The Don't treasure. be scared. The climate emergency and what to do about it is what landed Scott Morrison in the Prime Minister's office in 2018. That and a helping hand from Rupert Murdoch and the news outlets he controls. Morrison's government has failed to take meaningful action on the climate since, despite the bushfires and floods that were obvious to all and deadly to some. Australia has been completely captive um, to uh, vested interests in this space for such a long period of time. Industry groups, particular billionaire mining magnates who like to funnel millions of dollars into the election, as well as our concentrated media market uh, run by Rupert Murdoch's News Corporation. It drives the agenda and it sets the tone and it has a chilling effect on public policy and political discourse in this country. We've seen, you know, Murdoch-owned papers providing a platform for the Morrison government to launch scare campaigns about the cost of living, front page spreads, you know, saying that Labor's climate change targets are going to drive up electricity prices. And a lot of the time, those attacks don't stand up to any real scrutiny. And when, when experts have a look at it, they go, look, there's no basis for these attacks. But when they've been spread on the front page of major metropolitan newspapers, the damage has already been done. Not enough Australians bought into that. They voted out Scott Morrison and his Liberal Party which actually leans to the political right in favour of Anthony Albanese and the Labour Party. The new Prime Minister's coalition will include Greens and independent MPs who made significant electoral gains. They did so despite Rupert Murdoch, whose global media empire got its start in Australia in the 1960s through newspapers that made their bed with the mining sector, a steady source of ad revenues. Roughly 60% of the country's media space is controlled by Murdoch's News Corp, outlets that had a clear agenda in this election, demanding a policy of inaction on the climate. 
the Murdoch press were trying to paint anyone who pushed climate change as a far left greenie. This global warming cult is getting very dangerous. Trying to link them together in a cabal, scheming against the government and running this green left agenda, which apparently exists if you support climate change. It made them seem hysterical on something that really is a mainstream issue of major concern to almost everyone in Australia. Net zero by 2050 is not enough for these climate zealots. They actually think that we can do things in this country to change our own weather. And that is so scientifically flawed and full of delusion, it's not funny. The election is a loss for Murdoch. If you watch Sky News, the main TV station owned by Murdoch, they're reeling from the defeat. They have a, a, a very straightforward and, and quality news coverage during the day, but at night they have what has become known as Sky After Dark, which is full of rather rabid commentators. They're very shouty and, and they're very locked into uh, Scott Morrison, etc. And one of them on election night said, My fellow Australians, welcome to the first meeting of the new resistance. It's here each and every night at eight o'clock. Whilst this might be billed as uh, the decline of the Murdochs, it, it, it really is more a story about the decline of the, the legacy media. Given the irrelevance of the mainstream media outlets, you've seen a lot more interest in the social media space to explore this, including in sort of the infotainment or parody space. Honest government adds this parody account pretending to be the government talking about climate change that, that went global, really. We know these devastating floods have been hard for you, but they've been hard for us too. They've happened on the eve of an election. So all these different spaces on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and TikTok, people felt the impacts, they wanted real solutions, and if they weren't getting it from the politicians and from their mainstream media, then they were going to talk about it and elect people that reflected it. Rupert Murdoch and News Corp have grown into an agenda-setting omnipresence, gatekeepers standing between politicians and power in Australia. Half a million citizens have had enough. They've signed an online petition calling for a royal commission, a government inquiry into Murdoch, his company, and its influence. Having been ushered into office by News Corp, Scott Morrison was never going to agree to that. Now that Morrison's out, and Anthony Albanese has slipped past the gatekeepers and into power, the campaign for an inquiry into the insidious effect Rupert Murdoch has on Australian democracy is making another push. The News Corporation has a monopoly of the media market that's completely unseen in any democracy around the world. They're also the single largest employer of journalists and because of that journalists are largely unable to talk about what is going on. That's either because they work at News Corp or because maybe you need to work there in the future. I'm really hopeful that the campaign that I run uh, for a Murdoch Royal Commission is able to gain traction so that we can finally get some accountability and uh, some integrity back into the Australian media. So I'm dead against that. You don't start uh, having royal commissions into people exercising free speech, alert the consumer market as to the quality of, of that speech and let them make the decisions. But we'll hear a lot of clatter about inquiries into the Australian media. Rupert Murdoch, I worked for him for 36 years. And he hires a lot of my colleagues and uh, puts bread on their table. So uh, I, I, I'm not totally against him, but I do think that at times he, he lets the rabbits loose when they should be uh, controlled. And I think that's harming both him uh, uh, in a personal and in a corporate sense. But uh, he, he will come back. Nice left, Wendy. Murdoch isn't going anywhere. His news outlets are stubbornly sticking to their version of the climate change story. And we will see our living standards crushed regardless of which way the political winds are blowing and the brush fires are burning. Because of where they live in the Southern Hemisphere, Australians are ahead of the curve on this story. They are feeling firsthand the effects of the climate breaking down. Perhaps if Rupert Murdoch spent a little more time there and less time in New York City, 
overseeing his media empire, he'd see this existential story the way they've come to see it down under. But probably not.